Season 5 of Superior Angling TV is brought to you by Holden Insurance Agency and the rest of our fabulous sponsors. Good morning and welcome to this episode of Superior Angling. Today we are here in Duluth, Minnesota. We are on the St. Louis River and we are chasing eel pout in what I would consider non-peak locations. In your peak locations, there's always a lot of people fishing for them. These eel pout are starting to begin to group up to begin their spawn. Eel pout will spawn in, in January out here, but today we are downriver from the main spawning grounds targeting these eel pout in what I would consider kind of pathways to the spawning grounds. But these are, they're pathways, but they're also a little kind of holding areas where these eel pout can take a break, find some food, play in the current a little bit. So they're deep holes along the pathway, along their, their journey way to the spawning grounds, and we're here all alone. That's my favorite part about it is that there's no angling pressure. There's probably no one within, you know, a mile or two of us right here. So we have this stretch of river all to ourselves to chase eel pout on this cold January day. It's gonna be fun. So we're gonna grab some rods here and punch a few holes behind us in hopes of locating them. Now, I should mention that on the way up here, you guys could see some other snowmobile tracks in the drone shots. So that was us here yesterday checking ice. This is a river system. Ice is sketchy out here. There's current that can eat away six inches of ice overnight. Like, that's the reality of it. So you have to be very, very, very careful. You know, wear a flotation suit like a striker suit, you know, jacket and bibs, that will float you if you go in. You know, hug the shoreline, stay out of the river channel. Those are all things to consider when on a river system using the snowmobile and even walking. You, you know, even walking can be, can be treacherous out here. But um, yeah, so we, we made it here. There is good safe ice right now. And we're gonna punch some holes behind us and we'll show you kind of on our Markham MX-7 what we're looking at in terms of contour breaks because you do have to be very precise in your location to locate these eel pout in the winter time. Let's get some holes drilled. <laughs> Let's grab our MX-7 and here we are. Now as I mentioned, location is very, very important. You'll put like deep water, especially when they're migrating upriver. So you're not really gonna go on the flats and five, six, seven, eight, nine feet of water and catch them. You gotta be fishing in kind of the deepest water in the area that you're in. So right here, for instance, our deepest water is we have 30, 35 feet around us. That's going to be the deepest. Now there is quite a bit of that, so I like to find a water that's a little bit different. Maybe there's a turn in the river or a underwater point that kind of sticks out. Those areas are going to attract me to fish there because it's something different that could hold potentially hold those fish. Now looking on the MX-7 right here, we can see that you know this is by far the deepest water around us and there's a little break here it does stick out a little bit here and there's another spot where we're going to try up river here in a little bit that there's a big point that sticks out and you can see these contours perfectly on the navionics chip on our mx7 so what we're going to do is load up a heavy jig with a couple minnows on it again this is not a technical approach your eel put out here will eat about anything that you can get in front of them but you do have to stay heavy because there is a lot of current down there i like to load up a couple minnows on here 
because it helps get their attention. There's a lot of current, it's dark down there, it's a river system, there's moving water. You have to do something to get their attention. I feel like a couple minnows does that pretty well. So we're gonna load up this 5 8 ounce jig with minnows, drop it down and see what happens. Now as we drop down here, right, this is our first drop of the day. I'm not concerned about trying to see my lure. Again, this current is so strong. I've seen at times where my lure very well could be, you know, 30 feet, yes, 30 feet with a 5 8 ounce jig behind me. So that's how strong this current can be out here. So right away, I'm not gonna worry about seeing my bait. Um, in fact, this is a, you know, a type of fishing that you could even do without a graph at times if you guys don't have one. Um, again, it's not a technical approach, but I do like to have my Markham down there just so I can tell if there's activity, if there's fish swimming around, if fish are just coming in suspended, or if they're stuck right on bottom, just to try to get a, you know, a feel for what the fish are, are doing down there. But what I want to do with my jig, just kind of set it right on bottom and wait until you feel either pressure or a little, you know, a tick or a tap, and then you're going to let them take it for five, 10 seconds and then set the hook on them. But right now I cannot see my lure. You know, throughout the day I may drill some holes behind me and in front of me. Yes, the current will go down river, the current will go up river. There will be no current at periods of time throughout the day. And that current really dictates fish movement. But right now just, I'm just gonna fish for 10, 15 minutes, not worry about seeing my lure. Just get, get a bait down there, get comfortable with, you know, your setup that you have. And then I'm gonna drill a few holes and try to graph my lure. Cause it is fun when you can graph it, but it is challenging on here because the current changes so much. I don't know if this is a fish or not. We are on. We are on. <laughs> we are on, baby. That's what you like to see. <laughs> it's deep down there. You don't have all the, you know, best sensitivity, but you just feel a little weight or a little pressure and set the hook on them. I presume it's a eel pot. First eel of the year. Yes, it is. It's a little guy, but look at that, guys. <laughs> Come on, buddy. That's what you like to see. That's a good way to start. It's an eel. I mean, that's that's what you like to see down here. We're gonna get him back down, and that's awesome. I mean, that just tells you that you're in the right spot, and that there's eels around here. Now, yeah, I don't know what the rest of the day is gonna bring, but I like the way that started. Bite. Fish. Oh, is that cool? Man, did he absolutely pound that. Oh, that's fun. <laughs> and you see, like, I even had time to drop my gloves and set the hook on them. So you don't need to set the hook right, right away. I presume I'm getting close here. Yeah, there we go. Look at that. Hey, we're getting up there in size. But here, let's get this camera closer and show you how he ate this jig. Okay, now that's a 5 8 ounce jig, and I had three minnow heads on there. And this is what, a two pound fish? Like, you know, some people are so concerned about, you know, staying small with your presentation, and I get it, it's what you're comfortable with, but eel pot don't care, man. You can use big, heavy gear to stay more vertical and to get their attention and still catch fish. I mean, that's, that's fun, and he just cracked it. I mean, that's just, just boom. That's 40 feet of water, you know, 35, 40 feet of water with mono line in a current, and I still feel this fish hit it. So they are down there, they're aggressive, they're willing to come and eat a big presentation like that. So that is a lot of fun. That's a fun eel. I love it on a January morning. Let's get this fish back. There he goes. See ya. There's a bite. Oh, Got nice! <laughs> oh, you're on fire! I am on fire. Have you noticed that though? Like a minute ago, our line was going that way, and now yep. our line's pretty much straight down. Yeah, that current is constantly changing throughout the day. Those current transition times are really what you need to take advantage of. And again, you have no control over them, but you just have to be ready and you know get your lines in the water when that current does change. And just a little guy. Just a little guy. But again, 
that is fun. <laughs> and they hit that so hard. That's Neopot, man. Making his way up river to go spawn. And again, one of the other reasons why we're fishing the area we are right now is because I feel, and you know, we're not seeing it right now, but I feel you do have the potential for bigger fish in a spot like this. You know, up in those where the eel pout do spawn, there's a lot of, you know, your big females are the, are the big ones you want to catch. You know, those ones that, you know, 25 to 30 inches, like those are, those are big pout. And, uh, but when those females go up to the spawning grounds, I feel like sometimes they're just so dialed in on spawning, they're not want to eat, they don't want to eat. But down here, off their spawning grounds, you can get a lot of those bigger fish to go. So I'm hoping throughout the day today, we can see some bigger eel pout that, you know, you might have a better chance at catching down here versus up in the spawning grounds. And you know, in the spawning grounds, there's a lot of angling pressure up there too. So um, your chances are, are decreased. And down here, we're, we're all alone. That's what I love about it. Just kind of being on your own, having your own fish. There's no pressure around us. It's a nice, peaceful, quiet January day here on the St. Louis River. The current changed on us maybe two or three minutes ago, and since then I've been seeing quite a bit of activity. But when the current picks up, that means your jig just gets blown away even more. And I mean, I have my MX-7 three, four feet in front of me here, and I still can't see my jig, but we are in very deep water. There's times when my jig can be 25 feet that way. Eel pulp movement out here is all dictated by current, but I just like to let that jig kind of sit on bottom, almost like I'm surgeon fishing of sorts. I can see fish kind of come and go quickly on the MX-7, but that just tells me that, you know, they're riding that current around, really looking for food. Food? My rod? Got him! Nice! <laughs> oh, that feels like a good one. That feels like a good one. <laughs> just letting it sit on bottom and you just feel weight. You just feel it kind of, I just felt something kind of pick it up and then kind of go. That feels like a good fish. She's right here, man. She's right here. That's a big fish. That's a big fish. That's a big pout. That's a big pout, big pout, big pout. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that eel pot, man. That's a big fish. She's all curled up right now, but that's in that upper 20 inch range. That's what you like to see out here. Big fish, big eels on the St. Louis River, man. Look at that, that's a heavy fish. That's pushing 10 pounds, I bet. Ah, it's cold. But look at that, I love it. That's what it's all about right there. Whew. We're gonna get a picture of her because that's definitely a picture worthy eel pout and we're gonna send her back. What a fish. Fish on. You going? That a boy. That a boy. How does it feel? There we go. It's a little one. Eel pout. So I actually just switched my lure up. Kind of took a Took a little bit of a chance. You need something pretty heavy to get down there, so. Took a little chance. It is a little bit bigger, too. But, not a giant. So, I switched to that guy there. It's just orange and, and gold. 22 gram weighted spoon. Anything to really get down there and put a ton of minnows on, I mean, you'll probably get bit, but we'll get that one back down there. So all I'm doing with this, there's there's three hooks, travel hook, so you just put it through the tail and then you fold the minnow and you hook it again. And then doing this, I mean the hook is virtually invisible to the fish, not that I don't even know if they care, but um, again you just put it through the tail, you fold the minnow, you hook it again. Ooh, just picked it up. When you see them pick it up, I like to give them, you can see my rod tip going. There it is. Sweet. Ooh, that feels like a good one. I like to give them, I don't know, five, 10 seconds, especially if my jig's just laying there on the bottom. And that's what I was doing there, is just laying this machine lure work smelt head. It's kind of like a swim bait head, but it's working well today and it's loading up with two, three minnows 
and just kind of laying it there on the bottom. And how it sits, those minnows are kind of sticking up a little bit off bottom. And these eel pot are eating it. Feels like a good one. It's just like, almost like crappie fishing, but you're catching, you know, three, four, up to 10, 11, 12 pound fish. That last one we got was a big one. I mean, there's giants down here. There are giants down here. And it's fun, it's right here. And it's fun, so you can catch them all day long. That's a spunky guy. We're just gonna do this. Ooh, look at that. Look at that. Get you unpegged there. And yeah, not a bad, isn't that funny? This one's kind of skinny. So, so a little bit on the longer side, but skinny, younger pout, I presume. Not a bad one at all. Look at that. <laughs> They're such, such fish with character. Every one just looks different. They're looking dirt on their bellies. They're down there just cruising along on bottom and doing eel pout things down there. But yeah, not a bad fish. Let's get him back down. Get my hands rinsed off and warm those hands up. Cause it is a little bit chilly. Marine General. Get outdoors this winter with Marine General. Find everything you need for your winter adventure like ice fishing poles and accessories, snowshoes, clothing, and much more. We have the supplies that will have you on the ice all winter long. Our crew is here to help you find what you need. Visit us in store on London Road and online to start your adventure today. Come on into Marine General and get outdoors with us. You got one? Yeah. Boy. There we go. Atta boy. That was such a weird bite. It's like tap, tap, tap. <laughs> I was just looking on the map too to doing some scouting to move a little bit and you yeah. hook up. That's a good sign. So weird. I feel like they all bite different. They're all like they're unique fish. Yep. Yeah. That could be a good one. Now they're a little guy. On that spoon again. It's been working, so I'm sticking to it at this point. He took all those minnows too. So I was right on bottom for this one, just banging it off the bottom. And I lifted it a little bit and I felt a tap, tap, tap. All right, so in, in regards to kind of what jigs we're using, kind of you're in this deep water like we are right now. Your traditional walleye jigs just aren't going to work. Like your, you know, your eighth and quarter ounce buckshots and Lindy flyers and jigging wraps. Like there is so much current out here on the river today, and pretty much more every day out here in, during the winter time. I mean, it's just going to sail away, and you're never going to feel bottom. So you do want to use a lot heavier jig, especially when you guys are in this, you know, 20 to 40 foot depths that a lot of these eel pot are in out here on the St. Louis River. So we're just using a variety of, of jigs that I like. Um, the flat shad jig from VMC is a good one. Um, this is the Machine Lure Works smelt head. I mean, this is, you guys have probably seen us use these. It's a swim bait head, but it's very, it, you know, it fishes well in this current um, 5 8 ounce. It gets down there, it's kind of a, more of a slim head, so it really cuts that current. And these are junction jigs from Junction Tackle up in uh, Ontario there. So, um, you know, just that 5 eighths to even, what are these, these are a half ounce, is really what we're using and, you know, having luck with today. And again, don't be afraid. Yes, these are big, ugly, you know, heavy hooks. And that's another thing too, is I like a hook that doesn't bend. You know, these are very stout hooks on all three of these different lures that we had out. I mean, it's hard to bend these hooks. They're very well-made jigs that, you know, have have a lot of um, rigidity to them. So they're not gonna flex when you set the hook on these eel pout. Um, but again, you know, it's kind of a big, ugly presentation, but you know, that's that's just fine because these eel pout don't care. You know, a big 5 8 ounce jig with a gob of, um, minnows on there. You could probably use crawlers, you could probably use whatever. Um, there's just really nothing too technical about this, but it's just the big, your biggest battle is getting down there through the current and getting to bottom where these eel pot are. Just watching my rod tip. See this pressure there? He's eating it. So I, I mean, I have time to take my gloves off. I'm even going to feed him a little bit of line, make sure my drag's set right. He's there. Got him. There's nothing urgent about this when these fish bite. That feels like a good one. There's nothing urgent about it. That feels like a good fish. Your eel pot, I mean, like a walleye, if you don't set the hook just in time, a lot of times you're gonna miss them. That's not the case with these eel pot. 
they're so, I don't know if they're hungry and aggressive or they're just a, you know, anatomy of their mouths. They just don't, you know, they're not gonna feel your hook and drop it right away. So you do have time. I love it. And I'm using mono wine. I just, you know, on colder days like this, I just don't like to, uh, I like to avoid braid just for the ice up factor. Oh, that's a good fish. This is a good fish. You're not happy. You're not happy. <laughs> Come on, but they're hard to grab. They're hard to grab. I just like to grab them. It's like a bass. Look at that. That's not a bad eel pout. That'll, that'll crack the low 20 inch range. These are pre spawn fish on their way to the spawning grounds. Let's get him back so he can continue his journey. There's weight. Sweet. Ooh, that feels good. I couldn't see my jig on my MX7, but when you can't see it, just, you know, just. Ooh, this one's taking drag. Um, just, you know, just get in the habit of this kind of just bouncing it right off bottom and let it sit there for a while every now and then. This is a good fish. Um, just let it sit there. And that one, I just kind of went to pick up on it and there was weight there. So again, if you're catching like the actively spawning eel pout, they're gonna be suspended. These fish are not suspended. They're all just glued to bottom. So you just have to get your baits right down on bottom and just have patience. You know, some days you can come out here and catch 30, 40 of them. Other day you come back literally the next day and you're gonna catch nothing. That's just how eel pot are. They just move around so much. They're just, I don't know, there's a lot of var variables out here on, on the river. Look at that eel pot. <laughs> Man, that's a long one. That's a good one. And look, at this is how every one of these are hooked just perfectly with that machine lure work smelt head just perfectly right in the upper jaw you take it out i mean look at that fish that is beautiful that's a big one there and they put up a heck of a fight in 30 plus feet of water and current down there with you know medium power walleye rods you can't beat it on a january day all right well i think our time out here on the ice is drying to a close it's always a fun you know, this is a fun bite to get out here and chase eel pout during the day on the St. Louis River. You know, eel pout bite very, very well at night. I mean, that can by far be the most productive time to fish for them. However, it's more fun during the daytime too when you can catch them like we did today. I'd say we, you know, we had an average day, you know, nine, 10 fish, like that's, that's decent. It can definitely be a lot better and it can be a lot worse as well. You very well could come back here tomorrow and catch 20 or 30 of them or come here and catch none. That's just kind of how eel pot are. They bite good one day and you know, nothing the next. They move around, you know, this is like pretty much a migratory fish on the system. Um, you know, cruising up river to the spawning grounds and all the current and there's just a lot of variables down there that can impact the bite. So I feel pretty fortunate seeing nine, 10 fish today. Pretty happy with that. But again, you know, this daytime eel pot, this is a good change of pace midwinter like this in January. You know, we've been chasing walleye so hard. It's just fun to come out here and catch these fish out of deep water. A really fun fight catching two to 10 pound fish out of 30, 40 feet of water on walleye rods. You know, it's, it's kind of hard to beat. So what a fun day we've had. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you next time.